Hi, I'm Mark Brumley, president of Ignatius Press, and I'm here with Edward Penton, one of our new authors, author of the book, The Rigging of a Vatican Synod. Uh, Ed is also, many of you will know, that he's also a reporter for the National Catholic Register, and we're excited to have him here, especially to talk about this, no doubt, controversial book. Yes. Uh, tell us, Ed, why did you write this book? Well, first of all, what's the book about, and then why okay. did you write it? Well, the book, as you said, the title is The, the Rigging of Vatican Synod, with a question mark. Yes, yeah, question mark. Because right. there, are, there were strong allegations of manipulation at the last synod, and I felt at the end of it that if these were true, then I think Catholics need to know about right. it, and there did seem a strong element uh, of truth to this. So I thought, well, let's look into it and see what really happened. Um, so I sort of dug deeper and found that uh, there was quite a lot of evidence for not a, perhaps a deliberate manipulation, a concerted manipulation, but at the, same, at the same time there was an agenda to push through. And so I thought, well, let's uncover this in the hope that it will be it will help the next synod to be closer to the Holy Father's vision for the for the synod process. Um, that was my general aim. Okay. Well, you mentioned the Holy Father's vision of the synodal pro synodal process. What what was that vision? Well, it, the vision was, I believe, to open up the church to all of these debates that have been going on for the last 50 years about marriage and the family, and to really just thresh these issues out and get them discussed out in the open, rather than this sort of one side being criti criticizing the Vatican for not you know, listening to them. Mm -hmm. So get all sides to listen to each other and then just find out where to go from there. So I think the idea was, was pretty good. I mean, I... I think everyone sort of quite welcome that, but uh, but on the other hand, if you're going to have a debate, it's got to be fair, and I think if it wasn't fair, then people need to know about that. Well, there are all kinds of particular allegations, and we want to encourage people who are watching this video to get your book, uh, to pursue those and, and look into the questions and so on, but even apart from the particulars, some people are going to say, well, this is sort of muckrake, and why are you doing this, and how is this really of service mm. to the church? You know, shouldn't we just sort of look the other way when these things happen? Yeah, I mean, I struggled with it, to, whether I should write it or not. Um, but I got a lot of comments from people I really uh, respect in the church, church leaders, and they said, this needs to be told, this story needs to be told, because, you know, it's an injustice, it's, it's not fair, and the church should allow both sides to be heard. Um, and so my aim really is not, obviously not to muckrake, but to just bring a sense of fairness and fair play to the, to the process for the next synod, so that everyone gets a fair hearing. What would you say is the, and I know there are both, you, you sort of get both sides to it, you get mm. the critics and you get the people who are maybe criticized, or, yeah. or at least who represent a, a perspective uh, that's different from what the critics of the synod say. Mm. So you, you do give both sides of this, but what would you say is probably the overarching uh, problem or weakness with the last synod? That if, if that hadn't been in play, we mm. might not have seen all of the controversy that we saw, especially around the interim report. Mm. I think the key aspect that kept coming up again and again as I was writing this book is the kind of disregard for scripture and tradition oh, in the last okay. synod. And that there was a sort of a push to sort of start this sort of, in a sense, a new church, you know, to, to start with the problems and how the church should deal with the problems rather than start with where the, what the church teaches and then apply those things to, to the way the problems today. So I think that that was perhaps what many saw as the problem with the last synod, that it was coming from the wrong era, from the wrong angle. Starting from the wrong Yeah, the point. wrong precept. We were at a, we had a discussion at the Napa Institute and there was a, actually a, a somewhat unplanned uh, conversation between uh, George Weigel and uh, Cardinal Schoenborn mm. about uh, about not about the upcoming synod and um, Weigel one of the points he made was well let's not start with the sociology you know mm. and it was one of the hopes he expressed that, that the next synod would not start mm. so much with the sociology yes. start from a, a good theological grounding yeah. what's the family mm. as God has intended it and then, of course, you look at the problems of the yes. situation. Yes. And Cardinal Schoenborn wasn't opposed to that. He was trying to explain why some of the uh, other folk took a different perspective on it. Sure. But yeah. it was it was kind of interesting because it gets to this point that you're talking yes. about. When yes. you start with the, the problems, you can sometimes lose your, your perspective. Yes, yes. And I think the fact, as I put in the book, that those leading the Synod 
were of a certain bent, you know, right. re regarding theology. And so that all made it skewed as well. But I think the next synod could be better because it's starting not from the problems, but they're looking at solutions. So as we know, the church has solutions through the teaching and, and the scripture and tradition. So I think that's a positive thing. I think it could be better this, this synod than the last one. I had a discussion with um, one of the participants, I won't identify him at the last synod, who was somewhat upset with this language that was used, uh, which uh, there was a, a kind of multi-step process, and, mm -hmm. and it opened with listen. Mm -hmm. and But then what's described, what's attributed to listening is really looking. <laughs> yes. And he kept trying to get the synod fathers to say, well, you don't listen by looking or look by listening. We need, we need to get mm -hmm. this. And mm -hmm. what he was getting at was the old social Catholic social teaching model of look, judge, and act. Yes. And his point was not that we you know, shouldn't listen or we shouldn't look. His point was we should. We have to start by looking, but we have to look with sort of the mind of the church, the mm -hmm. eyes of the church, yes. because that will help us see what the real problems are. I know there are a lot yes. of people who would look at the Supreme Court decision in the United States mm -hmm. as not a problem, mm -hmm. but a solution. Yes. So yes. If, you, if you look at it from a, a, a sort of non- Catholic or non-Christian perspective, mm. you're going to look at that decision and say that's the right decision. Whereas yes. if you're looking at it from a Catholic perspective, you're going to look at it differently. That's true. To what extent yeah. was that at play, at least at, at the last synod, where they were sorting, starting from maybe, some would say, kind of a worldly perspective? Yes. Well, I think there is something to be said for that. And I, I put in the book that um, Cardinal Baldessari, the, the head of the Synod of Bishops, uh, I, I found out that he doesn't really... Uh, put much premium on natural law. Mm -hmm. So if you don't do that, then you're obviously going to start with on the wrong sort of footing. Um, so yeah, I think they, they came again from the wrong angle and they didn't really, I think, come from a, a sort of authentic, I mean, this is what I've heard, I mean, I can't really judge it myself, but the, the sort of authentic Catholic perspective mm. for the, you know, that's been done in the past. Right. Sort of, yeah. Very good. Well, Ed, we want to thank you for uh, taking some time to talk with us here. We want to encourage people to go out and get a copy of your book, The Rigging of a Vatican Synod, and uh, they can make up their own minds whether yeah. they regard it as rigged. Yeah, exactly. All right. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mark. Thanks.